So I find it a little rich that somebody who is going to teach you how to open a, a business, a, a, a card business, himself has never had a event at his own card shop. And his card shop basically is a proxy, which means it's no better than my card shop. I actually did originally hold events. The events had all, I actually, if you look at the Facebook page, uh, you can see that there used to be events. We used to do uh, Friday Night Magic, EDH Sunday, or EDH. We had two employees. Between the two, um, we could do, you know, basically six days a week. Full time from like uh, 12 hour days. Well, I mean, a little longer Friday, Saturday, right? And so on. I think Monday was off. So it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we a little bit longer and holidays and so on. The one thing that no one tells you uh, about is the emotional stress it is takes to own a store. From people pooping on the floor, to toilets clogging, to uh, people breaking your Wi-Fi by cutting the line for no reason. For people smashing your TVs, for people stealing even your employees, from people uh, buying employees buying counterfeit merchandise from hot gothic girls they are simping over where they clearly know it is fake and they're buying it anyway to resell to your customers who are then going to get super angry to uh being canceled on facebook uh deplatformed i guess is the term that the facebook moderator used uh to basically you know all these bad things about store Here's the problem with owning a store. You never live a better life. So if you're on minimal wage, which a lot of people are, is if you're barely making it paycheck to paycheck on the store, you would think, oh man, we moved to a new place. I I'm sure these store owners are making a shit ton more money. No, they moved to a new place because it's bigger and they have more inventory. You never get cash. Cash is always an issue because there's always a new set to buy. There's Lord of the Rings. We gotta buy that because that's gonna sell well. And whatever money that you made from Laura Ring, you put right, all that money goes straight back to the business with no dividend to the owners, which would be you. And you might be like, why? Why? Why does, why does this have to be? It is the case. I don't know why it has to be the case, but it's a cash flow issue. You always want to buy more than next, you want to maximize the next set. So if Lord of the Rings looks really good, you want to maximize buying that from your distributor. That means putting every penny in. That means not taking a salary. You never live a very good lifestyle owning a game store. I, I don't know how Card Kingdom does it, but I imagine it's the same thing that every dime goes back to buying more inventory. So what's happening is you're actually accumulating a shit ton of inventory. And I did that too. Like one day I woke up and I had what? 40 cases of evolutions. I was like, wait, how did I get this? You know, and then I had to call my children, no more, no more evolution, no more. No, this set sucks and I hate it. I remember that conversation and I offload some and then, you know, sell some. And then luckily for me that like, I got so tired of um, the uh, evolutions. I just threw in stories and forgot about it one day. Then one day I woke up and everything on my website was sold out. I was like, oh, must be a mistake. The so dude from the effing UK, he bought all of it. I was like, oh man, we don't sell to you. He was like, no, no, I'll buy, I'll pay anything. I was like, wait, what? And then I did sell him that, you know, I honored that he did pay a bigger price for the shipping and stuff in my time. So it was worth it for me. It was worth it for him. The boxes were selling for 500 at a time. I sold them to him for 250. He flipped double the boxes. Um, and I, I, I didn't even think that they could sell for $50, honest to God, because I was buying them for 34. <laughs> No one understands this. Like you just have shit tons of inventory because then you make some money and guess where that money goes? It doesn't go to your pocket. It goes back to buy some more inventory. And guess what? After that sells, then guess what? You buy, use that money to buy the next set and the next set and the next set. And you're always wanting kids because the way that it works, they always promote the next set as always oh, hot stuff. You know, like, oh, no, no, I need that hot stuff. It's like some type of addict, right? I need that real good stuff. Like every new set looks very shiny and oh my God, look at the aftermath. Rudy Chan says the Pinkertons love it. Of course, that's what, you know, what, what should go happen. Every new set is meant to look better than the previous set. 
and you sold the previous set, you made a little bit of money, guess what's gonna happen? All that money's gonna to go to a new set. Then you have, a little, let's say you have 100 box cases of, no, I mean, that's a little too much. You have 10 cases of this set. You sell all 10, you sell most of the 10 cases, then you can get 12 cases of the next set. Then you get 14, then you get six. So all that money is going straight back to the business. Now there are setbacks and the setback is called aftermath or dragon maze. Sometimes that new shiny set really sucks and no one wants it. And guess who taught, bought all the Baldur Gate? Forgot around, guess who bought the Dungeons and Dragons? Upon advice of Rudy Chan, you. You know how much effing Dungeons and Dragons I have? I'm live like unlimited. You know, like I got effed in the butt by a lot of magic sets. That doesn't mean the future, could, could I see some of these sets becoming money? Yeah. You know, the Dungeons and Dragons set, I did really, I did a Dominaria thingamajig that will come up soon. And that one, I'm not going to spoil for you, but that one went pretty well too. So I, I'm two for two. I have the new, new Compenna sometime this weekend. Uh, see if I can make money from New Compenna. Neon Dynasty I can make money from for sure. Uh, I just don't have, I just opened everything because <laughs> it was such a fun set. You know, Japanese waifu set. So I was like, oh, gotta chase the Japanese waifus. I have no choice. So anyway, that's kind of where I am with this. It's like, <laughs> man, like my best piece of advice is if you're okay being poor the rest of your life, cash poor, open the game store because I guarantee you, you will be poor the rest of your life. You'll be eating Twinkies, Oreos, so you won't have a long life. You have blood cholesterol, maybe you need insulin, you probably have diabetes. Um, you will, if you do not have diabetes already, you will develop diabetes as a game store owner. Your stress level will be just through the roof from everything from poop on the floor to employees clogging to Cheeto fingers on your prized $1,200 anime figures. If you want to die early, open a game store because I promise you, you will die earlier than expected than you normally should have. I remember uh, one game store owner, he had this ice cream, like whatever this thing was, and he, he knew the cost was very cheap. The mother effort would just, instead of eating lunch or dinner, he would just go eat ice cream every day. He was like skinny guy. He was like a skinny guy, maybe like 110 pounds. He's like 400 pounds now, wedge size. He just ate ice cream. Like he skipped every meal. There was no veggies or fruit. He's like, oh man, I'm too busy. I eat ice cream. Like when you're running a store, you kind of don't, I mean, if you have customers during lunchtime, and you typically do, or dinner time, like you know, when they have time off, right? So people come in, if you don't plan it right, if you don't get a big breakfast in, and maybe eat something healthy when you go home, like maybe you're going home like until mid on midnight or something. Especially if you are the only employee. If you are the only employee, which is more, most likely to happen when you open a new store, you're just eating Snickers bars and Twinkies, your blood pressure, like no one talks about this shit because no one actually owned the store. Like this is stuff that I, I don't understand why no one has talked about. Like, you know, so let's say you own a store, it gets really busy. Are, are you gonna go out to buy a salad? No, you're gonna go out to probably, you're probably located near a fast food restaurant because you're a gaming store, right? And that's where your players like it. So then that makes sense, and, you know, foot traffic and so on. But besides that, like you're not gonna, you gonna pack something for home? No, you're so busy, you're just gonna eat whatever you have. And that's probably Snickers bars, maybe Butterfingers. I do like Butterfingers. It's gonna be ice cream. You know, ice cream is very tasty. And what are you gonna drink? Oh, you're gonna drink the same thing that you're selling to your customers, Mountain Dew. Dr. Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, Diet Coke. I mean, just think about it for a moment. Think about the health repercussions of working at a, of owning a store, being its only employee for a little bit of time and just eating shit that your store would sell to their customers. Like your customers are not look, looking interested in some broccoli, right? They're interested in Chocolates, candies, ice cream, Twinkies, Oreos. That's the type of stuff that you, potato chips, soda. That's the type of stuff that you stock in your store because that sells. You know it sells, I know it sells. We don't have to do this roundabout thing. Whoa, this is a healthy store. 
have you seen the size of magic players like wedge like my god like it doesn't Ugh. it's late i'm tired i'm tired too many my too much diabetes